I, at the time of this video's publishing, it would be exactly July 23, 2024. Incidentally, my birthday! Yay! <laughs> Ngayon lang ko kung ilang taon na ako, ah. I am actually 28 years old. In hexadecimal. <laughs> so, if you convert it into the decimal number system, I'm 40 years old. So, man, I'm old. <laughs> so, ando na ako sa mga millennials, yung parang the older uh, millennials. Kami yun. Inaabot namin yung transition from the analog era to you know, the digital era, which is the internet. Before social media, boy na kami. <laughs> I just... I thought I would do this. I've never done this before. I've never done a list to actually share my realizations at a certain age. Because for the longest time, I've been 25 years old. If I continued that, this would be my 15th year of being a 25-year-old. Tinitigil ko na siya ngayon. Pero dito lang sa video na to, ha? after this, pagka tinanong ako ilang taon na ako, I will tell them I'm 28 years old. Alam niyo na kung bakit. <laughs> Medyo mahaba to listahan na to that I wanna share. So this is my 40 realizations at age 40. Tinry ko na cram no? uh, into just 40 things. Kasi marami pang iba. 40 realizations at age 40 in my experience. Kasi baka iba yung pananaw ng iba, okay lang yon. Basta sa aking experience, ganito yung mga realizations ko. But these can still change. Of course, nag evolve tayo as persons. But at this point in time, as a 28-year-old in hexadecimal, this is my realizations. Number one, failures aren't roadblocks. They are detours. Pagka nag-fail ka, hindi ibig sabihin nun, wala na, tigil na. Just means maybe, kailangan mo lang dumaan sa ibang path. Baka may ibang paraan. Lalo na if you're pursuing your definition of success. So maybe there's another path na mas maganda. You just prove that this particular path didn't work. So you learn from your mistakes and try again. Hindi ako masyado mag-expound kasi napakarami nito. I will try to go through them as fast as I can. Number two, life is too short to not have fun. Ito, napaka-importante nito kasi na-observe ko, lalo sa mga college students, sa mga bata ngayon, parang high-strung kayo, karamihan. At least sa mga nakakausap ko, Guys, relax. Okay? I know the world is kind of burning down. It, the economy is in shambles. Every moment na dumadaan, mangyayari lang yun minsan eh. Like this, the day I turn 40, that just happens once in a lifetime. So you have to actually stop, take a breath, and enjoy nyo kung ano yung present. Of course, we also need to think about the future. Pero make sure that you're appreciating what you have currently. Kung ano man estado mo sa buhay, there's something always that we can be thankful about. Number three, adulting is hard. Kaya rin naman, sinabi natin sa number two, appreciate yung present. Kasi lalo na pagkabata kayo, ang bilis dadaan yan. Di nyo marirealize your adults na. Pagkalating mo sa adulthood, ang daming bagay na nakakainis, ang hirap gawin. You have to comply with taxes, you have to pay this, you have to pay that, piling yung bills, ang daming responsibilities. Na dati naman, naglalaro ka lang eh, di ba? O kaya nag-aaral ka lang. Siyempre, iba yung working student ka. But sa mga taong who are just studying, learning, be sure na i-appreciate nyo kung ano yung meron ngayon. Kasi pagka nag-adulting na kayo, ako, guys. Number four, failure is one of the ingredients to success. Often, para ma-achieve mo yung success na gusto mong marating, you have to experience failure. Inevitable no? na mag-fail ka one way or another. But it's part of it. It's part of the journey. So, wag nyo masyadong don't sweat it out too much. Parang nag kayo pagka nagkamali kayo, pagka hindi kayo nag-succeed sa isang bagay. No? Ang ano nga, nga is to have a sense of amnesia. Kalimutan nyo na. I mean, learn from the experience, of course. Pagka nagkamali kayo, nag-feel kayo, but don't dwell too much on it. Kalimutan nyo na yon. 
move forward. On the subject of success, there's no such thing as an overnight success. Baka akala kasi ng iba, di ba? Yung mga nakikita natin, biglang, kunwari, si Heidelin Diaz. For her to win that gold, grabe yung pinagdaanan niya. Kahit ako man, for me to get to where I am now, I don't consider myself successful yet. But definitely, malayo na yung narating ko. Pero for me to get into this point, grabe yung pinagdaanan ko. You really have to work towards a goal, but don't expect it to happen overnight. And ganun din, pag may nakikita kayo ng success story, sa likod nun, alamin nyo paano nyo nagawa yun. Kasi the stories behind those successes is grabe. Number six, traveling opens you up to new ideas and worldviews. Ako, di pa ako nakakalabas ng bansa. But I try to watch videos ng mga culture ng ibang countries. And I see similarities. I, I see a lot of differences. Not only in culture, but in the way they think in the way they view the world. Napakalaga nito, lalo na kapag ka you travel like a local, na we consciously try, yung asawa ko at saka ako, we consciously try to do whenever we travel around the Philippines. We try to get the most local experience. We go to the markets. We go to mga karinderya nga minsan. Kasi, iba eh. Doon mo may kita kung ano yung kultura doon sa lugar, paano sila mag-usap, paano sila mag And that's very important kasi yung way of thinking mo nababago, na mamold ng mga experiences na yun. Number seven, sabi nila marami tayong dialects dito. Pero alam nyo ba na ang Kabampangan, Bisaya, Ilocano, and these other things, they are not dialects. They are languages. Calling them as dialects makes them inferior than yung sinasabi nating national language, which is Tagalog, Filipino. But they are very complex languages. Ang dialect is a variant of a language. Like, iba yung Tagalog, kunwari, sa Bulacan versus sabihin natin sa Laguna. Oh, similar sila. Pero there are some words na parang hindi, magkapareho. Of course, I'm not a language expert. But, merong mga intricacies na kahit lang sa way of speaking, magkaiba eh, di ba? Having said that, in number eight, It's so hard to learn a new language. But most Filipinos are bilingual. Marunong tayo ng, at the very least, Tagalog, saka English. Pero a good number of us Filipinos are trilingual. We know, for example, Tagalog kasi. It's considered to be our national language. English, saka, for example, of course, sa Cebu. Cebuano, Pampanga, Kapampangan. Ilocos, Ilocano. Diba parang... Tatlong language yung alam mo. And that's a very hard skill to master. To be a trilingual. Nako. Nung narealize ko to, napa... Pfff, oh nga no. Kasi admittedly, when I was growing up, I was ashamed that I knew Kapampangan. That I was Kapampangan. Kasi parang, no, ko, may discrimination towards ganun eh. No? May regionalism sa atin na was very strong during my elementary, high school days. It's just not something to marvel about. Pero ngayong medyo nagkakaedad na tayo, teka, trilingual ako. Kayo, bilingual lang. O kaya, nuwari mga Amerikano, alam lang nila, English. Teka, monolingual ka. Ako trilingual ah. So, in terms of language, I have better skills than this person. I'm not saying I'm a better person, but in terms of having that set of skills, for me, it's wow. Di ba? Number nine, it's never late to change careers. Kaya nga, may mga nagtatanong, di ba? Madalas. I'm... 30, 40, 50 years old, pwede pa po ba akong makalipat or makakuha ng trabaho sa tech? And the answer is always, no, hindi ka pang patanda. Kaya mo pang mag-shift ng career into the tech industry. You're never too late. Of course, this is within physical reason. Ha? Manwari, hindi na kaya ng katawan mo. You wanna change career into a PBA player. Let's be realistic here. Manwari, si Senta ka na, 70 ka na, ah, hindi mo na kaya makipagbangayan dun sa loob diyan. Yung reasonable naman. Going into tech is reasonable. A lot of other careers are like that too. You wanna be a painter, you wanna be a singer, you can do a career change as long as you are willing to put in the work. Then, ito yung mga programmer dyan. Programming is fun and fulfilling and frustrating all at the same time. Gets nyo yan, no? Sobrang saya niya pagka nasolve nyo, pero habang stuck kayo dun sa bug, dun sa problem na yung sinasolve nyo, sobrang... <laughs> Number 11. Everyone has a voice. 
kaya rin I encourage people to actually create. Hindi naman kailangan video, hindi naman kailangan something na sophisticated or complex. Try writing, blogging. Medyo na out of fashion na ang blogging ngayon. It's one way to improve your written communication. And it's also a way for you to put out your voice out there. You never know eh. Your voice kasi can help influence people. And, and can help inspire a lot of people. Number 12, ito medyo keso ah. Cheesy tayo ngayon. I am capable of being loved. Ito kasi, for the longest time, I've had this insecurity na I thought, one, that I was ugly. Hindi naman yung ugly-ugly, but I thought that I wasn't really attractive enough for the opposite sex to notice me. Notice me, senpai. <laughs> but when I graduated and met women, huh, ladies, tapos wala pong napansin sa akin, ganyan. Medyo yung self-esteem ko sobrang baba. Tapos pinangako ko sa sarili ko. May isang tao lang sa akin na mag-confess or may mag-confess naman ako, ano man, no? Na mag-confess na, sabihin natin, mahal niya rin ako. Wow! Mahal! <laughs> But kahit isa man lang na babae na magsabi sa akin nun, I promise myself na, hey, Okay ka naman. Na, Habihin ko sa sarili ko na I would believe na okay naman ako. I deserve to be loved. I am capable of being loved by other people. Sa so, yun nga, no? nag-girlfriend ako, narealize ko, okay naman pala. <laughs> I'm not too bad. No? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying na sobrang kagapuhan natin. No? Hindi naman ganun. But, kumbaga sa Barbie, di ba? I'm enough. <laughs> On the topic of love, it is possible to marry your best friend. Uh, I'm married to a very, very amazing person who happens to be my best friend. Nasasakay niya yung mga hirit ko and ito napakahalaga sa akin ito, yung tipong nakakasabay sa humor. My humor is medyo baduy. <laughs> But for another person to appreciate that, of course, binabara niya ako madalas. But uh, wala siya magagawa. <laughs> It's possible pala to be married to your best friend. Of course, it doesn't really happen that often but I'm lucky enough to actually have that opportunity. Miyak na ako. <laughs> okay. Number 14. Investing is never about timing the market. It's about time in the market. Ito medyo cliche, but it's true. There's a lot of people na minamadali mga bagay-bagay. The more patient you are with your decisions, with your investments, iba yung balik. Sa akin, ang tingin ko sa investing eh, the smaller the time you give your money to grow in the market, the more it becomes like gambling. Pero habang pinahantay nyo lang nyo dyan, lagay nyo lang dyan, tapos antayin nyo lang. No? Tapos pasok ka lang kayo ng pasok. Every payday, pasok kayo ng a portion of your salary. Eventually, makikita nyo, Neka, nagbubuho na to ah. And it will probably take you at least 10 years to realize na, hmm, this is actually working out. Of course, do your research. Hindi lang kayo basta-basta nag-invest ah. Kasi, guys, <laughs> pera yan. Kahit sabihin natin iniwan nyo sa isang investment yan, of course, there's a risk then na hindi siya umakyat during the next decade or so. 15. Invest as early as possible. Pinakamaaga na kaya nyo. I-arrange nyo agad yung financials nyo ngayon para makapag-invest na kayo. Huwag nyo nang antayin. Again, kasi nga, the more time you are in the market, the better. Number 16. Ito, sana na-realize ko to nung kabataan ko when I was starting out in my career nung kumikita na ako, that real estate is actually affordable. Of course, may caveat yan. Mahal pa rin talaga yan. But there are ways for you to actually pay for it. There's what they call leverage. But in simple terms, it's just debt. But good debt. No? Utang na maganda. You can leverage banks para ma-afford nyo yung isang real estate. At okay lang umutang, guys. Lalo na pagka real estate. Real estate uh, loans are considered to be one of the most valuable loans that you can have. Before I magpatuloy, this is not financial advice. Ha? You still need to do your own research. But at least in my experience, sana nung noon pa man, nung hindi pa ganun kamahalan yung mga lupa, hindi pa ganun kamahalan yung mga, yung mga kondo, bumili na ako. Kasi even nung maliit pa yung sweldo ko, I realized na parang kaya ko palang bumili. Kasi you have to only pay yung down payment. Actually, reservation lang eh. Yung down payment, usually may ano pa yan eh. You have to pay the down payment, sabihin, na, sabihin natin, 2 years. Ano pag pre-selling? 2 to 5 years, di ba? So, binabayaran mo lang yung down payment, di ba? Before mag-kick in yung loan. Tapos yung loan, bayaran mo na lang through the years. May pag-ibig naman. Hindi lang yung banks, ha? If I knew that before, 
Siguro ngayon, marami na akong lupa or no, marami akong kondo na ginawa ko siguro ng business. Uh, isa yan sa mga biggest regrets ko in, in terms of investment. I didn't invest early in real estate. 17. Make sure you have good relations with your bank. Kung may credit card ka, make sure na binabayaran nyo on time. Huwag nyo minaya ang nag-accrue yung interest. Kung kaya nyo nang bayaran ng isang buo yung credit card bill nyo, bayaran nyo na. And magbukas kayo ng investment account sa kanila. Just create as much financial activity dun sa bank na yun. At least man lang kahit isang bank. Pagka nakikita nila yung activity na yan, tapos na-realize nila okay na client to, ah, bibigyan ka ng perks. Pangalawa, nakakatulong siya pag kailangan mo mag-loan for example, to invest in real estate, it makes approving you a lot easier. Kasi alam na nila yung activity mo eh. You have built that credibility. In the US, credit score ang tawag, pero may equivalent din dito yan. Number 18, it's more expensive to hire cheap labor than to pay experts. Of course, depende rin sa financial situations nyo, di ba? Kung kaya nyo ma-afford. Pero if you can afford it, pay for the experts. Huwag nyo nang bayaran ko sinong informan dyan na nagdudunong-dunungan kasi in the long run, mas lalo kayong mapapagastos. Worse, may mga tao na gusto sila yung gagawa eh. Feeling nila sila yung expert. Although wala naman silang kahit anong credential to actually do it. Pero mas makakamura kayo pag uh, magbayad na lang kayo ng expert. Number 19, time is a resource. Value it. Kaya rin naman ako willing magbayad ng mga expert kasi they enable us to actually free our time na hindi ko na alalahanin yan. Lalo na pagka-reputable talaga yung expert na nakausap nyo. Sila rin bahala. Kunwari ako, nag-aayos ako ng loans. Kung nga, bibili ng property. Kumuha kami na ngayon ng, ano, ng broker. Akala namin dati, parang papamahal ka. Parang hindi naman. Sila yung parang naging lawyer mo in terms of real estate deals. Eh. So, ang laki na naitutulong nila ng mga experts na yan. Number 20, we are halfway. If you don't value your nose, no one will value your yeses. A lot of people are people pleasers, no? a lot of us, even myself before, na pagka may hiningi sa'yo, oo ka ng oo. Lalo na sa work, di ba? Tanggap ka ng tanggap ng work, lalo na pag nag-uumpisa ka. Kasi you think that's the way you prove na you're a good employee, na you're a good friend, or you're a good son, or you're, you're a good daughter. Pero mas maganda ng matuto kang humindi. Pagka pinahalagahan mo yan, no? pinahalagahan mo yung hindi mo, mas pahalagahan nila yung mga oo mo. Hindi nila take for granted. No, kasi bihira ka nalang umu. For you, ano, lalo na pagka sa trabaho, tambakan trabaho, mga burnout kayo pag oo ka ng oo eh. It's okay to voice out na hindi ko kaya lahat to. I have to focus on just these few things para matapos ko to. Then, sa ako, kukunin yung iba. Pagka ginagawa mo yun kasi, they, at least sa mga magandang organization, they would realize na you know how to prioritize things. Which is, we will go to the next item, which is when you have more than three priorities, you have no priority. It's better to actually just get one thing done than to try to get everything done. Marit, 10 simultaneous projects all at once, ay walang matatapos na. Number 22, the diploma is only as good as getting you the interview for your first job. Afterwards, its value diminishes. Yun lang yung purpose niya actually. To actually land you that interview. Hindi pa nga yung trabaho eh, di ba? Yung interview pa lang. Para lang mapansin ka ng HR. Uy, may gantong degree si Kuya Dev. Baka pwede siya rito. After that, nangari, nakuha mo na yung trabaho ngayon, na-establish mo na yung sarili mo dun sa company. Yung mga susunod mong trabaho, hindi na masyadong iniisip ka kasi titignan na yung, ano mo, yung experience mo. Yung quality ng experience mo. Related to that, work experience of each person hindi magkakapareho ng quality yan. No? Iba-iba yung value yan. Kunwari, yung experience ng isang tao sa Google, one year lang, versus sa kunwari ako, experience ko dun sa unang startup na sinalihan ko. Yung one year na sa Google versus yung one year ko, magkaiba yun. Doesn't really necessarily mean na one year ka lang, hindi ka na pwede maging senior. Kunwari, yung other side naman. One year, pero sobrang solid na experience mo. Senior ka na sa company namin. Number 23, ito, medyo makabayan tayo ngayon. No? I love the Philippines. Sobra. And it's heartbreaking for me kung ano yung meron tayo ngayon. Na nagsisettle tayo sa gantong gobyerno, nagsisettle tayo sa gantong public service. It's really heartbreaking. 24. It's okay to lose friends. As you grow older, yung circle of friends mo from siguro sa buong batch lahat kaibigan mo, paunti na paunti yan. And it's okay. Actually, my wife and I have uh, a recent podcast episode on the weekend wind down na pinag-usapan namin yan. 
Pakinggan nyo na lang yun yung podcast namin. 25. Introverts can network and introverts can do talks. It doesn't really equate. Ni porke introvert ka, hindi mo na kaya magsalita sa harapan. A lot of extroverts actually are afraid of speaking in front of audiences. We find ironic, but iba kasi yun eh. Iba yung skill of speaking in front of audiences. Kaya mga introverts, we get our energy by being alone in our solace. Extroverts get their energy by mingling with other people, not necessarily doing speeches or doing talks. Speaking is a skill. It can be learned, but you have to practice it and you have to take that risk to actually do a talk. In the same vein, we can network. Kasi imamanage mo lang energy mo no? as an introvert. A tip is for you to join communities na you have interest in. Like, kunwari, mahilig ka sa board game. Sali ka sa board game na group. You can build your network there. If you're passionate about ReactJS, no? sali ka sa ReactJS groups like ReactJS Philippines. If you're in Cebu, ReactJS Cebu. Join communities. Number 26, the Philippines so beautiful. Guys, kung hindi kayo nakapag-travel sa Pilipinas, gawin nyo. Napakaganda ng Pilipinas. I suggest to actually immerse yourself in the local experience. Iba, iba talaga. Number 27, time is very valuable. Nabanggit natin kanina, no? And it becomes even more valuable as you age. I'm willing to shell out money if it means it will free my time. Willing ako magbayad. Since we were living in a condo, my wife and I, tapos pareho kami busy, we agreed na kumuha ng helper dito sa bahay to no, maglinis, magluto, maggus ng pinggan. Kasi those things, pagka inaraw-araw mo yung mga yan, they really eat up your time. Sobra. And it prevents me, for example, to create this content. Di ba? Parang instead of me having the time to do things that I want to do, eto ako, nagugas ng pinggan or naglilinis ng buong bahay, magbabahay na lang ako ng ibang tao. Number 28, we can have different views. Magkakaiba tayo na paniniwala, okay lang yan. Politics, religion, tech, pero kaya na pa rin natin mag-coexist harmoniously despite all these differences. Being different is not a bug, it's a feature. Pagka magkaiba kayo, you learn from each other. Ang ano ko lang, no, kung pagka may dissenting opinion ka, huwag ka namang bastos. We can have a conversation na maayos naman eh, na disente. And I would appreciate that kasi matututo ako sa'yo, baka naman matuto ka rin sa akin. At least man lang ako, may ma- makuha ako sa'yo na parang hmm, different viewpoint na baka it will make sense no for me. Uh, I might not adopt it, but at least I have this idea na, uy, may ganito pala na viewpoint. Be respectful ah, Lalo sa internet, sa comments nyo. Dito, baka barahin niyo ako rito. Nako, ibablock ko lang kayo. Hindi <laughs> na ako masyado sumasagot sa mga nag-ano ngayon, mga bastos eh. Kasi parang sayang sa oras, di ba? Time is valuable. Sayang ko pa yung oras ko sa inyo, di ba? Ito, isa pang medyo controversial. Kasi we live in a country that values this. Family isn't everything. Respect for your fellow human is. Kasi may mga pamilya na parang inuobliga ka to act a certain way, to provide things na to support them at the expense na naaabuso na yung mga ibang family members. I really advocate na parang, teka lang, why are we giving family a free pass sa pagiging toxic, sa pagiging abusive? Hindi dapat ganun. Kailangan nare-respeto pa rin natin na isa't isa. Again, this is just me. Kung you you disagree, yeah, that's fine. But be sure you are taking care of yourself. No one should be abusing you, most especially your family. I'm not saying abuse ako. Ah. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Number 30, control only what you can control. Let everything else fall where they may. Kami dalawa ni Alvia, yung asawa ko. We are very disturbed by climate change. Sobrang ano nangyayari? Ang init na. Grabe yung mga bagyo. Pagka naman summer, sobrang init ng El Niño. You feel helpless na. Teka, sobrang overwhelming nito. Is the planet dying? We decided to control what we can control. Kaya rin naman kami nag-plant-based, no? Nang gulay na lang kinakain namin. Yun naman gul- lagi, sometimes we still we still eat seafood kasi ang hirap mag- mag- maging plant-based to kaya vegan dito sa Pilipinas. Eh. Sobrang, sobrang hirap. Ano na pagka you, you travel to the island, sobrang hirap makahanap ng alternatives. But for us, at least man lang nang mababa namin yung carbon footprint namin kahit paano. So that we can control. We can control na yung mga corporations na yan, hindi sila tumitigil sa pag 
emit ng mga usok. We can also control na wala kami makain sa particular restaurant na to. So, mag-adjust kami. Kung kaya namin kontrolin na seafood na nakakainin namin o isda. Di ba? Yeah, you try your best to actually be part of a solution. Pero, you can only do so much. Ito number 31, napakagandang realization is lately as you age, it's so much better to talk about plans and aspirations than talk about other people. I'd rather talk about ano yung plano mo? Ano na yung ginagawa mo ngayon? What are you aspiring for? Yung medyo mas naiintriga ko. And what are you doing para mapuntahan yung goal mo? Ma-achieve yung goal mo? Yun yung mga gustong-gusto kong conversations ngayon eh. Na ginagawa. No? With friends, with people I, I meet. Gets me curious. Isa pang magandang point. I really love seeing people around me succeed. Nakita ko kung gano'n mo pinagyapan yan. Tapos nakuha mo siya. Sobrang natutuwa talaga ako na galing, galing, galing. When people na, you know, you've really seen grow. Ngayon na speechless ka na, uy, they, they achieved this. And you celebrate it with them. Sobrang saya. 33. Real learning starts outside of the academic walls. We've been trained kasi to think na learning only happens in school. In college, in high school. Tapos paglabas, wala na. Pati in reality, yung matituturo lang ng academe sa'yo, ganun lang eh. Sobrang late lang yan. A lot of the real learning happens outside of the four walls of the academy. So wag kayong titigil. And I don't mean na para magmasteral kayo, doctorate, hindi naman hindi yun. Oh, of course, kung gusto nyo gawin yun, that's fine. Sa akin, I try to make every interaction with other people to be a learning experience. Even this, itong ginagawa ko ngayon, I'm learning how to create content, how to edit videos. There's always something New to learn every day. Number 34. No amount of success gives anyone the right to belittle other people. Ito napakalaga nito. Na porke nagawa mo ito, nari naging presidente ka or boss ka, feeling mo lahat ng tao sa'yo na sa paligid mo inferior sa'yo. You get that superiority complex. Wag po ganun. At the end of the day, pare-pareho lang tayo. Kung nari, mayroong maragasang comet. Mamimili ba yan kung boss ka o ano? Wala naman ni. Eh. At the end of it all, it doesn't really matter. What matters is your impact. Oh, sige, naggawa mo tong success na to. Gumraduate ka, kunwari, cum laude. What do you do with it? What kind of value do you produce? What kind of impact do you generate with people around you? How can you change society for the better? Yun yung mas mahalaga. Number 35, the corporate ladder is a sham. I mean, kung gusto nyo na i-pursue pa rin yung corporate ladder, okay lang yan. But for me, parang, I can expound on this, maybe in another video, but the corporate structure is designed to make people compete with each other. Na sobrang cutthroat na competition. Pero in reality, mas maganda yung collaboration. Eh. Yung collaborative culture versus yung competitive culture. Siguro yung friendly competition, okay lang yan. Pero yung tipong sobrang toxic nung, nung, nung nagiging kinakalabasan nung, nung pagiging competitive na isa lang yung magiging boss, isa lang yung magiging manager. Siyempre, magkakagawa niya mga yan, magkisiraan. It's counterproductive. Doesn't really produce the best leaders. The best leaders actually don't have titles. Which I go into the next point. Titles and positions don't make a good leader. Hindi. You don't need to have a title to be a good leader. Ako, ginagawa akong tech lead no? or team lead. Pero I never really aspired for it. I don't really need those titles. I can lead in terms of doing the right thing. Okay na sa akin yun eh. And maybe putting out ideas that could make uh, the team be more productive or build the chemistry of the team. Having that title, of course, gives you a bit of the responsibility in terms of decision making. Parang ikaw yung last say. Or you have a greater weight in steering the direction of your team. Paglabas natin sa opisina, wala, wala sa akin yun. Ayoko nang tinatawag na sir, masyado eh, di ba? Or boss, ayoko yun kasi pare-pareho lang tayo nagkatrabaho rito. Masa pare-pareho tayo ng goal and we are striving towards that goal. Tingin nyo lang sa akin parang coach, no? Na ito, ito, sige, baka ito yung mas magandang direction natin. Ganun lang ako. Number 37, oh, sobrang le- relevant nito sa akin dahil it's so hard to create content. Ito nga lang, hirap na hirap na ako eh. Ito yung tuyo na yung lobby ko, guys. Wala <laughs> na akong laway. <laughs> so hard. Mag- mag-edit ng video, so- sobrang hirap. Mamili ng music in the videos, napakahirap. To set up these lights, napakahirap. Again, kakain ng oras. Sinabihan na nga ako ng isang kaibigan ko na parang mag-hire ka na lang ano, ng editor mo and everything. Sa akin naman kasi, na-enjoy ko pa siya. There will come a time na parang, wala, hindi ko na talaga kaya. I'll hire na, 
an editor. Sa ngayon, kaya pa. I'm actually enjoying this. Yung nga lang talaga, ubus oras. And it's very hard. Hindi siya biro, guys. Sasasabihan lang kayo. But ganyan lang yung content mo. <laughs> Number 38, plant-based or vegan or vegetarian food isn't boring. Di lang kayo mahal ng nanay nyo. <laughs> Sorry guys ha. <laughs> Ito lang, medyo irony sa, ano, sa Pilipinas. Ang daming gulay na potahe rito. Pero parang ang bland. Parang mailuto lang kumbaga. ba? Diba? Pero a lot of these actually, kunwari, adobo. You can veganize this. Tapos masarap siya. No, lalo na yung mga magaling na mga vegans, ang gagaling nila magluto. Kasi inaral nila. No, napakalaga nito. Aralin mo para baka mapasarap mo. I've grown not, not to like vegetables kasi akala ko, ah, hindi ba sarap? Pero yun pala, no offense sa nanay ko ah. Pero hindi lang pala siya marunong magluto ng gulay. Nung ito, inaaral na ng asawa ko, di ba, si Alvia? Ako hindi ako nagluluto eh, sorry. <laughs> um, pero asawa ko inaaral niya. Tinitingnan niya, no? mabili kami ng cookbook, sa may mga pinafollow kami ng mga influencers sa IG, sa TikTok, even Facebook. Aba, napakasarap! Guys, you are missing out pagka hindi masarap yung gulay niyo. Kaya nalulungkot kami pag may mga restaurant na, oh, may gulay nga. Pero bakit ganito yung luto? Parang so, sobrang basic. Hindi nyo i-elevate yung mga vegetable cuisine dito sa Pilipinas. Kasi ang daming gulay sa Pilipinas, di ba? Sayote. Actually, bahay kubo nga yan, di ba? Yung mga gulay doon, kung alam nyo lang lutuin yung mga yan, napakasarap. The Philippines is actually an outlier. Kasi a lot of our neighbors are Muslims, Buddhists. So, they have delicacies na vegetables na. And they enjoy it. Tayo parang after top eh. <laughs> Ano tayo eh? Meat heavy talaga tayo eh. Number 39, sa mga fans ng Bini dyan, di ba? Ang buhay ay hindi karera. Life isn't a race. You can go through it on your own pace. Pero may nag-post uh, a few days ago, nabasa ko, na this is very bad advice. Ang counterpoint nila is, paano yung mga nagmamadali? Yung ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Kaya nga eh, do it in your own pace. Pag sa pace mo, kailangan mo magmadali. Magmadali ka. If, if there's a sense of urgency, of course, kailangan mo magmadali. Pero hindi ka nag race sa iba. It is on your own lane. No? Walang race. Do it in your own time. Hindi porque nakakaangat na siya sa'yo, it's nahuhuli ka na. Hindi ganun yun eh. Nakatie up siya sa last point natin. If you have to compare. Compare with what you were yesterday. Don't compare with what others are now. So wag kang kumpara. Kaya nga hindi siya race. Kasi race is by definition... Kailangan ikumpara mo yung bilis nung isa doon sa isa. Hindi naman kailangan. Do it in your own time. I-compare mo yung sarili mo kung sino ka kahapon. Or a week ago, or a month ago, or a year ago. Mas maganda yon kasi doon mo makikita yung progress. Eh. Nag-grow na ako. Like for me, nag-aaral ako mag-swimming ngayon on my own. Self-taught, no? YouTube lang. I try to record myself swimming sa ilalim. Lagi tayo ng camera sa ilalim ng swimming pool. Then I try to watch uh, how I do things. Then, every session, parang nunuuri ko ngayon, may may instant replay, you know? Noon ko makikita ngayon, uy, ang laki na nung naging progress ko. From someone na who didn't know how to swim, freestyle, ngayon medyo okay-okay na. And I can, dati hindi man ako nakakaka, at least man lang 20% nung swimming pool namin dito, which is I think uh, yung length niya is 25 meters. Di ba, hindi man lang ako makapag, maka 10% noon. <laughs> Pero ngayon, nakakaisa naman lang ako. Bago, bago ako ingalin. Medyo mas effortless. Hindi tulad dati talaga, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Ngayon, mas, mas maayos na, mas smooth na yung galaw ko. Ang dami pang karangang araling kasi, I didn't know freestyle was this complicated, this complex. Uh, hindi siya biro, guys. For me to actually have this trajectory na, wow, ang layo na narating ko. Malayo pa, pero malayo na. And I was only comparing with myself. That's... My 40 realizations at age 40, or in hexadecimal terms, <laughs> age 28. <laughs> Sana may natutunan kayo. At kayo ba, may, may mga realizations din kayo at, at your age? Lagay nyo lang sa comment section, and I will try to read them. Thank you for watching, and see you on my next birthday. Medyo ko lang, on the next episode. Bye!